What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a short little review of something that's not a knife but something that uh, I think people um, in this community um, are interested in um, or would be interested in or probably have been interested in in a long time in the case of these. Um, these are uh, little widgie pry bars, little um, everyday carry pry bars. Um, these have been around for a long time. The one I'm holding here in my hand is the medium straight. Um, they come in a small, medium, and large size, and they also have the options to be curved uh, for each one. Um, I have been on the hunt for, I mean, just like I am with knives. I like finding, you know, knives that I, you know, find aesthetically pleasing, but, you know, perform the job that I want them to do um, as efficiently as possible. And um, I find myself a lot of times in a situation throughout the day where I don't need a knife for something, but I need a, a thing to get in somewhere or pry somewhere or do something. And using a knife in that situation just it wouldn't be beneficial and you risk damaging your knife. And most of the time, honestly, I use the flat head portion of my um, Victorinox Cadet. But there have been some situations where I've been a little bit nervous to put excess pressure on this um, lateral force because it operates on a pivot. Um, so I've been searching for a long time trying to find a dedicated um, pry bar that I can carry with me every single day. And I've had a bunch of different ones and I always find an issue with um, either how it carries, you know, how thick it is or long it is. Um, so there's dimensional issues. Um, and then also I've uh, run into situations where the pocket clip on a lot of them just isn't ideal. Now I found some really amazing looking ideal ones out there, but the problem that I generally run into is one of two things. Um, one, it's either sold out um, because they're awesome and they're just not going to be made anymore. Or two, they're incredibly expensive and I'm just not interested in paying, you know, not, not to come down on anybody who would pay two, three, four hundred dollars for a custom pry bar. Um, I'm not interested in doing that. Um, the main benefit of these things is what they cost. Now, you can get them in titanium. These are in steel. Um, they run about between $10 and $15 online. I found each of these for about $12. Uh, they used to be like $5. Uh, $12 is not a price that I'm really concerned with considering what I will get out of these. These are all in steel. This is the Pico, the medium, and the large. I'll go ahead and measure each of them for you so you kind of know what we're looking at here. Um, the small one, the Pico, is coming in at a grand total of two just a little like a hair over two inches almost two inches exactly um the medium is coming in at about three inches and the large one is coming in at about four inches all three of these are absolutely ideal edc sizes um, you have the option for them to be straight and you have the option for them to be a little bit curved. Um, I prefer it to be, you know, my, my EDC carry. You can see here I've got a suspension clip on this one, which we're going to talk about a little bit. And really, there's going to be a dedicated episode to the suspension clip itself. But um, I find that this one carries the easiest. Um, the, the curvature, you know, I don't think it really matters on the little guy. But on the big guy in my pockets, you know, in my pants, I've found that I, I prefer not only it for it to be shorter, but for it to be straight. Um, but e each of these is an ideal EDC size. You'll be happy with any of them. Um, truthfully, I think that the little one does the best on your keys. You know, there are situations where I forget to carry my Victorinox. Um, so it's just like a blurry image of this being waved in front of the camera. I forget to carry the Victorinox or, and there are definitely going to be situations where I forget to leave the house with this guy. Um, so having the little one on my keys is awesome. It'll always be there. It may not be exactly the right size for the job, but it'll still save me from using my, um, my pocket knife. You know, I definitely don't want to use the tip of the Manix 2 to pry or screw something in. I would rather just use the little claws um, on the, if I have to screw something in, I'd rather use the little claws on this, or if I have to pull a nail out of a wall or something like that, you know, that's going to work really, really well. Honestly, I probably, there's more situations throughout the day where a pry bar, a little mini pry bar will get the job done. Um, and a, a pocket knife is not needed. And, and, uh, you know, in my work situation, my, um, you know, I, I just work in an office. 
So yeah, a pry bar is going to come in um, just as handy, if not more handy, um, in a lot of situations. Uh, it depends on what type of office you work for. You know, I do a lot of driving. Um, I'm out and about a lot as well. So it, it just depends on your individual, um, you know, needs. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really, really think that these are great. And some people, you know, when they're looking for specific objects, like, you know, there's there's knife guys and there's there's knife enthusiasts and there's knife collectors, but there's just like guys who use knives and they don't really care. They just want a, um, a cost efficient utilitarian tool. The same thing goes with things like pry bars and flashlights. You've got the collector crowd and then you've got, you know, just the, the utilitarian guys. Now I appreciate some of those crazy custom ones. I like that. But when it comes to a pry bar, I just want something that is um, thin and light and easy to carry. And I don't really care if it's customized or not, you know? Um, so this is why these, I love these so much, you know, 10, 12, 15 bucks and you get something that should last. I mean, as long as you, you don't, you're not trying to like pry open a bomb shelter, you know, they should last you a really long time and they are made in the USA. Uh, I don't know what grade of steel they're made out of, but it feels pretty tough. It doesn't feel like I can easily bend this or anything like that. I like that it says made in USA, US government. And that's it. Apparently, these used to be something that were issued to sign soldiers at some point. I don't. I don't know. I don't know the history behind them. Honestly, um, this is really just more about the the design. Um, but I, you know, that that's what I like about them. And beyond that, for people who do kind of want to put their own flair on there or do whatever, what's cool is, is they decided to put a little hole in the back of them. So if you want to put a lanyard on this and you want to put a cool bead or whatever, you want to take paracord and you want to wrap these and put your own flavor, you can do that. You're going to spend a lot more than the total cost of the item, but whatever, it's yours, you know? So if you want to pick one of these up for 12 bucks and then you want to spend another, I don't know, 15 bucks on, um, or, or let's, let's say you want to spend 40 bucks on the paracord and a custom bead for it. Okay. Well, you're, it's 60 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of money to spend for something like this. You know, let's call it 75. That's a lot of money to spend for something like this, but you're going to have your own cool thing. In this situation, this is literally what I did. I got on eBay and I looked for a suspension clip because these have been recommended to me um, a lot. Uh, the cheaper ones though, you can get suspension clips on eBay for about two and a half bucks. I have found that if you read the reviews on those cheaper ones, you have a lot of people that are upset with the quality, you know, they break or some people claim that some of those are made out of plastic and they're, they come from China. I, I don't know. I didn't want to risk it. So I waited. I found this titanium suspension clip on eBay for 11 bucks. Um, the, uh, person selling them was out of Texas. They claim to, um, uh, be uh, making these in the United States. And I thought, you know what? That's probably worth it. Simple deep carry titanium clip. It came with a ring that was a little bit too small. So I added a larger, you know, like a typical ring from uh, my, my keys and it's just perfect. The depth that it hangs in my pop, my pocket is perfect. Um, in this setup, you know, you know, a lot of people say, well, you could just put this in your pocket. You know, it's small enough. The problem with that is, is that I will forget that it's in there because it's so small and it's so light. I'll forget that it's in there and I'll wash my jeans. It happens all the time with this guy. This guy has been through the washing machi machine uh, so many times and it's fine, but I don't want to, I don't want to lose it. And I also don't want to risk it getting jammed in my washing machine or my dryer and messing something up. So the fact that this pocket clip is here, I actually put it in the same pocket as my knife on my right side. It gets, you know, more the left side of the pocket and the knife gets the right side, you know, back towards the seam. Um, it just works perfectly. I mean, it's there when I reach into my pocket at the end of the day to pull my knife out, because I know the knife is there, I can feel that other pocket clip in there and I, I pull it out. Everybody's going to have their own EDC setup, but you know, basically the reason that I wanted to talk about these is because the, the, um, the cost to utility ratio on these is incredible. Even with the little teeny tiny one, you know, I, I love these things so much. And the other cool thing is, is like, these make great gifts. These make perfect gifts for, you know, Christmas or Father's Day or, hey, you know, Mother's Day. I mean, whoever, anybody in your life that you think might benefit from um, uh, something like this. And I, it's one of those things that I think kind of helps teach people who are, they're, they're, they, they, they like knives, but they're like getting into more of like our part of the knife world. 
and learning about what you what people do and don't use knives for. Now listen, I'm not saying that people who take knives and use them for things that are not supposed to be, you know, knife things are are unintelligent. Everybody can if the, you pay you paid for your stuff, you use it however you want. You know, nobody's going to judge. But for people who are starting to appreciate some of the finer aspects of a folding knife, maybe they're spending some more money, you know, they're not going to want to damage those knives, you know, because they spent $50, $100, $200, $1,000 on their pocket knife, whatever, right? This is a great little gift. It's like, hey, I, uh, I got you something. Um, it's not super expensive, but it'll save the tip of your knife. And they're going to appreciate that. And they're going to use it. You know, it's all, I mean, whether they carry it on their person or they keep it in the console of their truck or in their car or just at their desk at work. I mean, these things are super cool. Um, the combination of the utility and the, the, the potential for customization and just how they fit in, you know, so easily uh, in a person's everyday life. I mean, these honestly, of, of all the pry bars that I've seen, of all the pry bars I've, I've handled, um, which is not, not, I haven't handled a ton. You know, I've, heard, I've, I've purchased like three or four different, you know, cool EDC pry bars, but of, of everything that I've seen, these are easily the most recommendable. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody any new information here. I mean, these have been around for a long time. It's not like these are new. Um, like if, if I didn't mention, they come in steel and titanium. Um, uh, you know, there's not, not much in the way, you know, as, as far as like judging fit and finish on these things, they look like pry bars and that's what they are. Um, the titanium ones are going to cost a little bit more. They're, from what I've seen, 16 or 17 bucks for each model, whereas the steel ones are between 10 and 15, whatever. It's a couple extra bucks. I, it's either way, they're, the steel ones are going to be plenty capable. I think titanium's a little bit more forgiving, but steel is technically a little bit stronger because titanium's stronger by, it's like the strength to weight ratio is better. I don't know, whatever. Pick, pick whichever one you want. The benefit of titanium really in something this small is that it's not going to corrode on you. Um, but uh, even if one of these starts to get a little bit of surface corrosion, it should be a simple matter of just taking some um, polishing compound and, and some steel wool and just, you know, kind of cleaning it off. But I just think these things are excellent. And uh, for anybody who didn't, I mean, I know most people watching are going to have already been aware of these. But for anybody who wasn't aware of this and you're looking for something like this, um, this setup is just excellent, you know, and it weighs nothing. I mean, we, let's go ahead and weigh them. We didn't do that. Uh, we're doing everything backwards because it's unconventional. We'll start with the little teeny tiny one. Uh, 0.3 ounces on the little guy. Um, we'll weigh my medium one here with the clip. That's not really going to be fair. 0.74 ounces is probably, you know, more like 0.6 ounces. And yeah, so the big heavy one is uh, three quarters of an ounce or the, I'm sorry, the big long one, the four inch one is, is three quarters of an ounce. The medium sized one with the clip is also three quarters of an ounce, probably 0.6 ounces by itself. Basically nothing, not enough for it to really register that it's there, which is why it makes it so cool. A lot of these um, pry bars that are available nowadays are just too big and bulky and heavy. And yeah, they might be a little bit more capable, but for just regular people just running around doing regular stuff throughout the day, you know, I still recommend, you know, people carry something like this because even if you're not a knife guy, like these are just nice little tools to have. Um, we'll do a couple of uh, size comparisons with some common knives and some common objects. Uh, here it is. Here are all three of them up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. And here it is up against the uh, Spyderco PM2. By the way, Rat 1 was 8.6 inches overall. The PM2 is 8.3 inches overall. Here it is up against the, uh, here they are up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. Here they are up against the Spyderco Delica. Spyderco Delica coming in at 7 inches overall. How about up against the Victorinox Cadet? Victorinox Cadet coming in at, what was it? It was like 6.5 inches overall. Let's measure it. I always forget that one. Uh, Victorian Arxidet coming in at five and a half inches, maybe five and three quarter inches overall. How about something um, simple like a USB drive? Typical USB drive. How about a quarter? Um, toenail clippers. <laughs> what else do I have here? My flashlight. That's the EGTAC um, D3C. 
Um, just some typical items, I think, um, that uh, might help out. Um, typical uh, typical uh, fob, typical key fob, I think, uh, for nowadays, that's about what you're looking at there. So these are nice, small items, easy to carry, um, very beneficial. Um, something that I can absolutely 100% recommend. Um, these are gonna go in my non-knife um, EDC related stuff, but I'm tempted to put them in my most recommended knives playlist just because I like them so much. I think these are awesome. I don't know how I managed to make a 15 minute video out of these little pry bars, but I think I've said everything that I really want to say. Check these out, you can find them everywhere. Um, eBay is an easy place to find these, but um, really, really cool. That's going to be about it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this or at least found it entertaining. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of both knives and EDC-related stuff um, on this channel, so check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.